Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at Suku Spring Collection Part 2. So I do have a video with Part 1 already. I'll leave that linked down below in the description box. Be sure to check that out. Those are the items that I received in PR. The rest of the collection that I have here, these are all things that I purchased. So let's go ahead and we're going to get started. We're going to start off with the eyeshadows. So I'm going to do arm swatches of the items that I have in video part one, but all of the eye swatches and demos and things like that are all going to be in part one. So if you are interested in those, definitely go and check those out. But let's go ahead and start off with the liquid eyeshadows. So these are the liquid luster eyes. There are three shades in the spring collection. This first shade here is number six, which is a new permanent shade. So pretty much everything in this collection is limited edition, but this shade here is going to be permanent. It's described as a rose gold. I actually really like this shade. I was a little wary uh, because rose gold, you know, sometimes if it's too pink, you can look a little like red eyed, but this actually has a nice peachy coppery hue to it. And there is some sparkle in here. So uh, this is a really nice shade and it goes very well with the palette that I have today as well. Now, following that in PR, I received this one here, which is limited edition number 103. And this is gonna be more of a mauve shade here. To say I really like it, all three of the liquid luster eyes, I think were really well done. I really like the colors. For these and then also limited edition we have shade number 104 so i have to say i really do like all three of these these are great if you put this on your lid just kind of buff out the the edges the crease area and use as one and done or you can use this as essentially a, a base or an eye primer they work very well that way so these are the three shades we have six 103 and 104 let's take a look at the powders so this is palette 135. So this is the one that I just picked up now. And you can see we have a very light blue with a touch of gray. It's kind of like that sea blue, sea gray kind of shade. Following that, we have a coppery shade here. It's copper with a touch of peach. It's like a more intense version of the Liquid Luster Eye. You can see that this is going to be a shimmer. And then we have this marbled shade. So the marbled shade has blue and brown, copper and white. I don't really love these marbled shades. Some of them are more powdery than others. This one's actually on the creamier side, so you don't really get much fallout or anything with this. But I just, they look a little chunky to me, so they're not a favorite. And then we have a matte taupe here. So these are going to be the colors in the palette. I have to say my favorite shade in the palette is the taupe. I think it's a really nice taupe. Now this is palette 134. I received this one in PR. Let's just go ahead and we'll swatch this one here as well. We have more of a soft dusty rose with a touch of taupe in it for the matte shade. Then we have this really beautiful soft rose uh, shimmer shade our white you know kind of amalgamation shade has white and purple and copper in it so it does have a slightly different hue to it and then our deepest matte shade here is going to be brown with a hint of purple in there hint of mauve so this is palette 134 135 let's take a look at the eye swatches and the demos so starting off with the liquid luster eyes Again, we have shade number six is permanent and shade 103 and 104 are going to be limited edition. So here today we're looking at the newer eye swatches. Again, the other shades are in part one. So that is linked down below in the description box. Overall, I have to say, I really like these liquid luster eyes. When I initially tried the formula, you know, some, you know, creasing can be an issue with liquid eyeshadows for sure. Um, but I have to say the particular ones here in this collection seem to be holding up a little bit better on my eyes than those in the permanent. So I wanted to see whether or not that was related to the fact that it's now winter and it's a little bit drier. But no, actually these shades just seem to kind of be slightly drier in general and they hold up really well. So I'm really impressed with the liquid luster eyes. It's as though they maybe perhaps they tinkered with the formula a little bit and it's 
it's really nice right now. So shade number six is described as pink copper. It says capturing the warmth of spring sunshine and fresh budding florals. This orange pink pearl shade features gold glitter that shines in the sunlight. I think it's a gorgeous shade. And in today's eye demo, I actually use it as an eyeliner as well. And that just adds just a little glimmer by the lashes. The green shade is 104 Sage Gold, and it says this sage green shade is inspired by a captured moment of soft new green leaves swaying in the wind. Featuring luxurious gold glitter, this shade can be worn softly for a delicate wash of gold or layered for extra dimension. And again, I think the liquid luster eyes are definitely gorgeous, really well done. As for the signature color eyes, our powder eyeshadows, so palette 135 is inspired by the spring sunlight. This palette features a light gray toned aqua mint to bring shadow balance with a warm deep gold to create a three dimensional look. I have to say, I don't love this palette. I think it's, the color story is nice and it swatches well on my arm, but then when I go to put it on my eyes, it looks like a lot of the color just kind of dusts away. For our golden shimmer shade, the, if you want to build that up, you definitely want to use that more as your base. When I put it on top of the mattes, it does kind of fade out, kind, kind of blends away a little bit. And I feel like the mattes themselves don't have that much presence. Now I have all or almost all of the eyeshadow palettes in this formula from Suku, and I would have to say that this is not their normal quality. There's something about this that is just making it kind of, it's a little bit more powdery and it's just kind of blending away, which is not the norm for Suku. These shades in general are also very light and soft, which just kind of exacerbates that issue a little bit. So I love the color story, but this one itself, I, I don't love the performance of this particular quad. So I think it's only okay. And again, in general, these more marbled shades are really not a favorite of mine anyway. So between the two palettes, this one and the one I featured in part one, I really like the one in part one. I didn't have any issues with any of the formulas there. I think it's gorgeous. Um, and that's just a great everyday one. It has a little bit more presence compared to this one on the eyes. I first wanted to start off with this palette from Addiction Tokyo. This is their Holiday Palette 101. And I just wanted to kind of swatch some of the similar shades, starting off with this pink here by the 135 palette. You can see that this is gonna be a warmer pink. It's a bit richer, it is a shimmer. And then here's the blue. So let's see, this blue is more of a topper shade. You can see how sheer it is. And it's gonna be a more of a like bluebell kind of blue. Um, but you can see the difference there. And then this taupe here. Let's see how this taupe compares. This is gonna be a satin and it's gonna be warmer in tone than the Suku. So we have, again, palette 135 and 134 here. And on this arm, we're gonna be putting some comparison swatches. I wanna start off with the Chanel Peru Crystal. And these palettes were actually just restocked here at the Chanel US website. So I found that to be interesting. But you can see we have kind of these peachy rose shades. And then we have a brown and a light blue. So here's Peru Crystal. You can see how that compares. So it's almost blending the shades from palettes 134 and 135 together. And another similar palette is the Dior Mimi Rose. So I figured let's go ahead and take a look at this one as well. You can see we have kind of this light peachy topper. We do have a light blue as well. Notice both the Chanel and the Dior blues are going to be uh, like a lighter, brighter blue. Uh, we don't really have that gray hue that we have in the Suku. And then we have, again, more of these like peachy and rosy tones here. So these two palettes, again, are sort of a marriage between the two Suku 134 and 135 palettes. So this is Suku 135, this is Suku 112. This is limited edition that came out a while back. I wanted to go ahead and compare this one. And I'm gonna put this one vertically so we can see the uh, demarcation of where this palette starts. You can see that this light blue here is actually a topper shade, so you're not really getting much color from it. But we do have kind of this yellow shade 
and a soft peachy coral and a brown. So that's our color story with these. All right, so one more time before I remove these swatches, we have Chanel Peru Crystal, Dior Mimi Rose, and Suku 112. And in contrast, here's 135 and 134. Next, we have a few requests of comparisons for the 134 palette. This here is the YSL 400. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. So here's YSL 400 with the Suku 134. You can see that we do have some similar shades in here. This is gonna be a little bit more pinker, whereas the Suku is a little bit more of that dusty, dusty rose with a little bit of mauve. This definitely has less of that dustiness. Another request of comparison, this is the Prada 04 palette. We're gonna take a look at this metallic pink with the metallic pink right here. You can see that this is gonna be brighter and it actually is a stronger metallic. It's not as subtle as the Suku. Really beautiful. They're both beautiful shades. And this is the Viseart Violette Vespertine. So we're gonna go ahead and swatch some these top two shades here in the top row, see how they compare. Let's go ahead and we'll go vertically here. And let's see, let's take a look at this shade here. That one looks looks like it, it's going to be fairly similar. Let's take a look at this rosy matte down here as well. All right. I would say that the Violette Vespertine, you can definitely get a very similar look to the Suku 134. Let's take a look at the original Viseart Cashmere palette. And let's see what shades might be similar to either of the palettes. So this is the first shade here. And... Looking at the first shade in the middle row, that's gonna be a bit warmer for sure. But I also want to take a look at the last one in the middle row and see how that compares to our copper shade, our golden shade in 135. But you can see that's gonna be a lot more orange. And then this light purpley shade, let's see how that goes. No, nope, definitely more purple. And then Cashmere Charmeuse. Let's just take a look at a few of the key shades. So we're gonna start off with this shimmer shade, see how that compares. You can see that this is a little bit brighter pink. It's kind of in between the Prada and the Suku. And then I also want to take a look, let's take a look at this gold shade here, see how that compares to this shade. It's definitely much more yellow. We also have this matte here in the top row that goes fairly well with the first shade in the Suku. And let's see how this matte shade goes. This one might, oh, it's more brown than either of these. Yep, so those are gonna be my comparisons for, from Viseart. And just a few more, this is the Dior Backstage Silver Essentials palette. So, so let's take a look at these here. We'll start off with this middle shade in the top row, followed by the one on the right. And that's gonna be much more purple. This kind of, let's actually put this side by side with the, the gray from Suku, the blue gray, but you can see this is gonna be much more silver. It's more of a bluish silvery shade, and again, it's not gonna be matte. Our purple matte, however, let's see how that one compares right there. You can see it's purple versus blue, but it does have a similar vibe to it. So those are my eyeshadow comparisons. I hope those were helpful. Let's go ahead and move on to the blushes. So this here is blush shade 146, and we're looking at our pure color blushes. So let me swipe you know, left to right. So this here is our first shade. It looks like it might be matte in the pan, but it actually has a satin sheen to it. If we go kind of in the middle where the color gradient is changing, it's gonna be a little bit more subdued. And then our highlighter shade all the way on the right is a light blue. It's not gonna be super sparkly or anything, but it does lighten things up. If you are to blend all of these together, 
this is what you get. And it's gonna be kind of a soft peachy shade there. Let's just go ahead and buff this in. And that's what it looks like. And that's how I have it on my cheeks right now with the blue itself as a highlight. Now the blush I picked up for part one, this is 147. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one as well. And I have to say, you know, I got this one. And I was like, okay, well maybe the other one is going to be significantly cooler. Well, actually they're not. None of these blushes are truly a cool tone blush. So the blushes themselves, if you're looking at the left side, they're all gonna be pretty warm. And then our highlighter shades, we got a light blue and a light lavender. They're a little bit cooler, but it's still going to be overall a warm palette. So just something to note, our major difference is here we're looking at more of a coral, something a little bit brighter, a little more brightening on the face, whereas this is gonna be more orange. Let's take a look at the cheek demos. Suku is describing this blush, number 146, as floral pink and misty blue. It's a yellow toned pink. This shade is created by blending pink pearls and pale blue highlights to deliver natural flush that blends smoothly into the skin. I do think this is a really pretty shade, but it is definitely a little bit warmer than I was hoping for. Now, between the two blushes, this one is my preference, the 146. The 147, it's a beautiful shade and it's gonna look gorgeous on people with warmer skin tones. My skin tone is neutral with cooler overtones. So for me, neutral and cooler shades look a little bit better. And if you have a warmer undertone though, the 147 really is a gorgeous blush. But for my particular complexion, I prefer the 146, add some brightening. I do wish, however, that the blush itself all the way on the left didn't have quite as much of a sheen. I would like it to be a little bit more matte. I, I just think when you buff this in, if you're building up the color, the sheen ends up being a little bit more than you might expect. So overall, I think the two blushes in the collection are nice, but they are not favorites of mine. So I don't have any comparisons for this blush, but just to show you one more time, we have the 146 and the 147. So again, the 146 is gonna be a little bit cooler than the 147, but they're both gonna be fairly warm. Let's go ahead and move on to the lipsticks. And I have to say, these are my favorite part of the spring collection. So when you purchase the new Moisture Glaze lipsticks, they come as a refill. So this is how they're gonna come with this cap. It's completely functional like this. You can screw this up, you can use it. It's just not aesthetically pleasing, but this will keep your lipstick fresh. And if you're leaving it in a drawer, no issues. This is not something you wanna throw in a purse because the cap is very easy to slide off. Um, and then if you'd like a case, you have to purchase that separately. So this here is the case and I have a comparison with the moisture rich cases in the part one video, but it does have a click closure. We have our Suku logo on top, which is one of, that's the major way that you're going to identify your new lipsticks versus your older ones. And all of these moisture glaze lipsticks will just kind of snap in here and there we go. Now, if you're using it just as a refill, we do have our label with all of our information on there and it won't be on the bottom of the case you purchase separately. When I originally received the PR for this collection, I received the lipstick in shade five and it's a beautiful purple berry. We'll be swatching it here, but I fell in love with the lipstick formula. So I ended up picking up a lot more of these lipsticks than I originally intended to. So we're gonna start off with shade number one here. And you can see shade number one is gonna be a warm nude. So we've got brown and some peach in here. So it's actually, it's a really pretty shade and it's not overly warm on the lips. So I actually, I think this is a really beautiful shade. I'm really happy with this one. Shade two is going to be a pink and you can see that we have, this one's gonna be a warm pink. So with this formula, you can see you can get a sheer layer or you can build this up. And we'll talk more about the formula as we go through the lip swatches in just a couple minutes. Here's shade three. And shade three is going to be this really pretty coral shade. 
And I think this actually, it goes very nicely with the 146 blush. Uh, they do have a similar tone. This is gonna be obviously a bit more vibrant. And when you're looking at corals, this one it has a little bit more orange in it. So it's gonna be a slightly warmer coral. This one here is shade number five and I'm absolutely loving this. You know, it's kind of a purple berry. It's got more purple, a little bit more blue in it than what we often see with berries. I think it's a beautiful color and definitely one that's gonna be pretty popular. Now, number six was described as a uh, nude mauve. I have to say, I think this is definitely gonna be more of a brown. There's maybe perhaps a little bit of mauve in there, but not much is really more of just gonna be like a a rosewood with a little bit more brown in it than a traditional rosewood and then we have shade number seven and this one it looks brown in the tube but you can see this one actually has a bit more of a warmer brick red hue to it so there is gonna be some brown in there but it's really it's like brick red with a hint of brown and then this one here is shade 10. And this is what is on my lips right now. And you can see I, I dented my thing there. But um, yeah, so this one here is actually a replica of one of their most popular uh, moisture rich shades. So let's move on to the lip demos. Suku yeah. officially announced that they are discontinuing the moisture rich lipsticks. And these new moisture glaze lipsticks are replacing them. Now, all of these moisture glaze lipsticks here are permanent. There are no limited edition shades at this time. So these are all permanent shades. And I have to say, I really love this formula. Now, according to Suku, this formula here, it glazes the lips with a rich glossy color, creating a plump and fuller lip that has a blurring effect on vertical fine lines. That's what I wanna highlight here. So the reason I really love these, these are one of your high shine lipsticks. Think Chantecaille Lip Chics or the Sicily Fido Rouge Shines. It was a similar kind of formula where you have that high shine that's a mix of a lip balm, lipstick, and lip gloss on the lips. But these are a little less sticky than some you may have worn in the past. But the biggest thing that differentiates these from others, in my opinion, is the blurring of the lines. And you can see in the lip demos here that my lip lines, the vertical lines on my lips, they actually look a little bit less once I put that lipstick on. They are not as visible. And I think that is really awesome. And I think for me, that's the biggest differentiating factor between these and the previous moisture rich lipsticks as well. Now, texturally, the moisture rich lipsticks felt just a slight bit softer than these. These are slightly firmer. It's not a major difference. Both of them are very comfortable, but I do find that these are a little bit more hydrating on my lips when I wear them for a longer period of time. So in the part one video, I did talk a little bit more about this lipstick and key things that were included in this formula, but today I really wanted to focus on our difference with the Moisture Rich lipstick. Now for me, what I notice as the biggest differences between the Moisture Rich lipsticks and the new Moisture Glaze lipsticks is one, the blurring of the vertical lines. It's definitely very evident in this new formula and I, I just don't really notice that so much with the Moisture Rich. So this is definitely an improvement there. I also find that these feel more hydrating on the lips after a long wear and the third thing that I wanted to mention is the tackiness. The Moisture Rich lipsticks, they're also high shine, very comfortable, but I did notice that my hair has a tendency to stick to those more than the Moisture Glaze. The Moisture Glaze really has like less of that tackiness when it's on your lips. So just something to note there. Uh, well, another thing that sets these lipsticks apart, the Moisture Rich and the Moisture Glaze from other similar brands is the fact that these have no fragrance. So something to note there. In summation, my thoughts on the Suku Spring Collection, I think it's a very nice collection. My favorite 
is definitely the lipsticks. I think the lipsticks are phenomenal. I really, really love this formula. I think it's a really great formula. I love the fact that there's no added fragrance in here. The colors are great. The formula is great. Very happy with everything about this lipstick launch. I can't wait to see what shades they add to it. As for the rest of the collection, I think the blushes are okay. The eyeshadow palettes, I really like the one I originally picked up the 134 palette. So that one is my favorite between the two. I really like that one. I think the 135 is just okay. And then the liquid eyeshadows I think are also a winner. So if I had to rank things in terms of favorites, it would definitely be the lipsticks first. I absolutely love the lipsticks. Favorite shades are probably going to be five, 10, maybe one, and then six. Those would probably be my, my favorites in order there. And then I think my next favorite thing from this collection would be the Liquid Luster Eyes. So the 104 shade, I love all three of those. So I would pick up all three of those again. And those would definitely be my favorites from the collection. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you picked anything up. So far, this collection has launched at Selfridges, but it is launching at other retailers on various dates. So I will leave all of that information down below in the description box. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day.